kitchen stump kitchen gluten-free vegan eats stumptastic treats are you ready i'm ready so i guess you'll just tell me what to do and we'll go through it together yeah no you're gonna tell me what to do because i don't know what okay, we're making good. that's right that's right okay great i can't wait um, okay, okay what are we doing i'm so excited okay. What I thought we would make today is just an easy vegetable. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> it's just an easy side dish that you can make or to snack with. Oh, there you go. Love, love, My love. zucchini babies. Oh, I dropped zucchini one. Babies. Oh, no. Don't drop your babies. That's right. This one kind of looks like my little arm. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's right. It's almost the perfect length. So, but it's just a simple little recipe that is just, we're going to bake them. And it's just with balsamic vinegar. And then we're going to top it with some Parmesan cheese and like um, some panko breadcrumbs just to give it a little texture. And, but it's really good. I and it's really easy to do. Before you start, I want to show you, I got gluten-free panko breadcrumbs. I've never oh, had these before, but I found them in the shop. I called them and we picked it up outside because of the pandemic, but they have gluten-free panko. What the heck? And I found a recipe from my mom of this vegan Parmesan cheese where you just like roast some chickpeas and add nooch and salt and then you blend it up. And it's this beautiful vegan Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna eat it right here. That is perfect. So, good. so I have all my things ready to go. The first thing we'll do is we'll cut up the zucchini. Okay. And let's say ideally like about a fourth of an inch. Okay. Now I got a new chopper because my old chopper was kind of on the fritz. I have the rheumatoid arthritis. You know, my hand gets very weak and, and I don't hold the knife right. So sometimes I take those shortcuts and, and use whatever I can that will help me. Absolutely. And, that looks so fun. It, so it does help a lot. So the new yeah. chopper doesn't make exactly perfect rounds, but it's kind of like us. Since the zucchini is a little big, it has some that are kind of cut off and then it has the little ends. So it's kind of like our, our, our arms, our little arms and our big arms, like little sticks, but it'll all work together. Absolutely. Just, you know, just like us. Nice and unique. That's I right. love that. These said about a quarter of an inch, so they're like little patty almost okay right my little pads so I'm gonna get mine ready to go in a little chopper zucchinis are so great because like they take on the flavor of whatever you're making and they're so soft and easy to cut that's true they don't have like a hard skin on them or anything they taste so good I mean I sometimes I'll even eat them raw with like some dips or you know salad dressings and it tastes yeah. so good all right I can't so, wait to see how this chopper works and I also use like these silicone pads to kind of hold things in place and that helps me a lot too. I mean, if I had to cut it by hand, I can, but, but I prefer taking any little help I can get. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Here we go. And one, two, three. <gasps> what? That was Isn't miraculous. That cool? it so quick. Now I'll cut up the other one and put that in. And they're all in that little container, so you don't even have to worry about them rolling around and falling on the floor. Exactly. Colleen, should I preheat my oven? Oh yeah, let's preheat our oven to 400 degrees. 400 degrees. I don't know about you, but I always forget to preheat my ovens. Like I get to the baking point and I'm like, no. I know, I do the same thing. I would love to hear more about some of the cool kitchen equipment that you use, that you've used like because of your limb difference and arthritis, like anything other that you've found that's been helpful. Cause like that cutting thing is rad. What oh yeah, I love, love that cutting thing. And then I also, this little opener for like, like my, my red drink I'm showing you for example or soda bombs, you know, if I have a difficult time opening up the Pepsi or the Coke. This little thing my husband found for us and we ended up buying several of them because I don't want to ever be without it. And it just goes right on, you push the button, And it, and, it, and it opens it up for me. No. Isn't that awesome? I cannot tell you how many times that I've been in the kitchen with like a really hard bottle or like a pop can or pop bottle or anything with the top like that. And I'm just like this, I'm just like, Ha, ha, ha. And my poor teeth. Like my dentist must be like, what are you doing to yourself? So that's amazing. Yeah, this thing is, is so great. Yeah. And like, you know, I use my, I, I will admit I use my teeth a lot too because it's like my extra you gotta do. Yeah, we gotta do, we gotta do. Exactly. Um, and any, and like this kind of gadget or you know, any little thing that, that we can get, we buy them. And that's so, like, that's so satisfying because you're just like, whoosh, and they just get all cut. Exactly. It's awesome. All right, I'm gonna try to double it up. I'm gonna try to double it up. up. Okay, I gotta watch Let's this. Let's see if it'll work. Okay. Right. Don't no, cut. Yeah. Hope I don't break it. Well, maybe I should only done one. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's a valiant see. effort. I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. I did it. Yeah! <laughs> oh, 
so satisfying. Now your workout for the day is done. Love Yay! That. How many do we need? Like how many zucchinis should I cut up? Just two. Just like two medium size. I medium bought three and one was really tiny. <laughs> Just a tiny baby. I'll save that for oh, my lunch. Oh, no baby. Maybe like while I'm finishing this chopping, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like what's your story? Like, well, let's see. I'm 51 mm -hmm. and I, you know, of course was born like you. I was born with just having a little arm. And I know you call yours your stump, which I love. But all my life, I've always called it my little arm. And that's, that. what, that's what my family always called it. I used to wear, you know, a prosthetic when I was younger. But seventh grade, I didn't want to wear it anymore. Because I felt like I could do so much more with just being me. And I do great with it. I don't, I don't know any other way. You know, I worked for 28 years. I was in like a credit card company. And I was in customer service. And then I was in collection. And then I went into training. I helped to train the people when they wanted to start to work from home. My last four or five years. And then it just got too rough with my arthritis. And, you know, I just had a lot of surgeries over the years. I've had my hip replaced, ankle fused, my wrist fused, my knuckles replaced. But, you know, I'm just like the bionic woman, plugging along. You really that are. That just makes me who I am. Yeah. That's so rad. Thank you. That's so cool. And I can see by your shirt that you, you have a love in your life, which is Minnie Mouse. Oh yes, I love Minnie Mouse. Even though I'm older, I fell in love with Minnie Mouse. We're huge Disney fans. And when you go to Disney, no matter what age you are, you're just like a kid. Absolutely. Minnie's the role model of all the characters to me. You know, she's Absolutely. classy, she's sweet and loving, and I don't know, that's just kind of how I am in a nutshell. So I just kind of found a liking to her, and now I have them like all over my house, my kitchen. You know, it just makes me feel good, so dress the way you want to feel, and just do whatever you want. Absolutely, that's such a good message for anyone out there, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, where you're from, all those things. Just like put the things on your body that you feel good with and love who you love. I just, I love that. So and, should I get a bowl? Yeah, you can put them all in a bowl and then okay. we'll add the um, balsamic vinegar to them and kind of shake them around a bit. Now, one other little thing about me, um, I met my husband, believe it or not, on a blind date. No. Our mothers worked together and they set us up. And it was so funny when it was right before the date, I even said to my mom, like, could you tell them that I have one arm? And my mom's like, oh my God, I didn't even think about it. Because I, I don't think about that with you. And I was like, oh, Oh, great he's gonna come to the door he's not gonna know i hope he doesn't freak out but everything was fine you know we're, i was more nervous than i needed to be and we've oh. been together now 33 years that is so sweet so how did he react do you remember he was just like about i was just like a normal person like he didn't even call him a normal person but it's in the face of one bit you know, he was that's like so like okay that's just the way you're born let's just go with it and that's what we did that is amazing then you knew like it's so important to have a partner in your life or friends or whatever that you can just like be yourself not have to feel like you have to hide yourself or adjust who you are or just how you do stuff for them because I think too many people in this world will ask you to be someone different they might ask you to hide your arm I've known people who've been in relationships and their partners have been like can you hide that blah 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 like it's just unreal so to have that, that is, is so, so special right and when I see people like like out on the street or if I you know I run into somebody that's like me I am so thrilled I walk up and introduce myself and, and you know, and I'm like, look, we're twins. I know. And, but then you get the people that are like me and are shining in it and love it. And then you get those others, like you said, that sometimes you want to hide it and don't want people to notice yeah. them. But I have never been that way. Yeah. I want to show it off. The only thing that we can do and the best thing we can do is just be who we are, be in our bodies and put that out there to the world. So hopefully the people that need to see that will see it. And then that might give them, I don't know, whatever they need to, to have the space to be a bit more gentle with themselves and maybe try taking their arm out in public for once. Mm -hmm. This kind of conversation is so important and the stuff that you're doing, putting it out on online, it's so, so great. And I think for me too, because in my work now, I often work with kids and I see people like younger than I do it's more rare that I get to see adults right. in my own age range or even a bit older it's like nice to have those role models so thank you for being that for me I think it's thank really you. really cool I like that we're all trying to be our authentic self and, and we are making a difference no matter you know it really does make a big big difference absolutely I love that so what's next we got okay, so next, next we're gonna add some balsamic vinegar now I will admit I'm not one to really measure me neither I like to do Oh, good. I use a recipe as a guide, but then I just do my thing. Look, we're twins. We're twins. We're using the chicken wing technique. <laughs> when I saw that, that you called it the chicken wing, I said, of course, that is so perfect. It looks yeah. just like it. Yeah, chicken wing. Yeah. So it says about a tablespoon, but I just kind of just splash it around a little bit, you know, just to cover it a little bit, and then we'll shake it up and stir it around and kind of coat them. Oh, you just shake the bowl. Oh, wow. Okay. Now you can shake or, or we, you can, I know you like to, to go right in. Oops. Jumped out of the pool. My bowl's a little too small, I think. I might have to go right in because mine's a bit thicker. It's like a balsamic reduction kind of thing. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to go right in. Oh, yeah. That's right. Just go 
right in. Our hands are our best utensils. Do you use your little arm to like mash stuff and like kind of? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh cool. So what like, do you like to use sometimes it Sometimes I'll do this oven, like I'll roast some little um, little potatoes, and then I want to kind of mash them and then put them back in the oven again to kind of get crisp up. And my yeah. little arm is like the perfect little thing to do that. I mean, I might have to let them cool a little bit because I want to burn myself, but but it works perfectly. Oh, that's brilliant. I totally agree. Now another little thing, like with my bowls, some bowls come with an automatic with the thing on the bottom so they don't slip. But I also still use the little silicone little things and that helps keep my bowl steady. That helps me a lot. I can spill stuff so easily. But what happens in the kitchen stays in the kitchen. Okay, that's a new one that I love so much. It's so true. Like I spill so much. I drop so much and I often have stains like right oh, yes. here on the boob line from holding things like right like this, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And again, this is a our boobs are a big help in the kitchen as well. <laughs> oh, honestly, they are. And ever since having my baby, my boobs are like twice the size. So they help so much more. I'm just like, yeah. I bet. I love that. What happens in the kitchen stays in the kitchen. Stays in the kitchen. <laughs> so good. My cooking sheet I'm going to use, I don't want to have to really wash. I know you got to wash off your hand. There we go. I, I'm just going to dry it off. <laughs> I'm going to use tin foil, line my, my sheet. A little easier, you know, for cleanup and everything. Yeah, I'll use parchment paper. Your stump and my little arm is so perfect to get in all the crevices. And... Absolutely. Now we'll make the topping while the zucchinis are soaking up the balsamic. All it is is really just, oh yeah, we have to salt and pepper, I forgot we we're supposed to salt and pepper garlic powder to the to the um, zucchini. So we'll do okay. that too. Now here's kind of what my zucchinis kind of look like. Is that about how yours look too? Yeah, they're kind of like moist. Oh, awesome. And okay, good. We got ours nice and coated now. Awesome. Yeah. So now we'll just kind of salt and pepper to taste. Right in the zucchini? Then, yeah. Okay. And then we'll add some garlic powder. Oops, if I can open this one. Let's see, where's it at? Salt, pepper, garlic powder. And then we can do another little shake. Sorry, we should have done that before. I got sidetracked. That's okay. That's exciting. Uh, okay, so that's okay. There you go. Shake it away. Now we'll do the, the Parmesan cheese, which okay, well, maybe that you have the, the vegan kind that you made. How much should we put in, do you think? Use those teeth. That's what I got to use sometimes. But it works. So about a cup of the cheese. I'm just going to kind of pour it. If it spills out, that spills out. It, extra cheese is always good. Absolutely. Oops, oops, oh well. That's definitely a <laughs> cup of cheese. Oh yeah, we need the panko. And about a, about a third of a cup to a half a cup. I practiced with this the other day. I did a third of a cup and I thought it tasted pretty good. Awesome. That's the way I open up my stuff too. Or I use scissors. What I open up my stuff up just like what you just did. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like our teeth probably are a bit stronger than the average bear, would you say? Yep. You know, I, I go to the dentist all the time and, you know, I gotta keep my teeth around because they're an extension of my hands. I know, right? All right, so now we'll do about a third of a cup of this. Well, that's cool that we found some pancos. I know, I'm so excited. Yeah, because my arthritis, my hands just, I just don't have the grip or the strength anymore. Shoot, I can't even get some of the teeth. Let me use the scissors to get it going. Yeah. Oh. That's like me too, I'll just use a knife and just be like, Honk. <laughs> right, just make a hole. And then I usually sprinkle a little bit more garlic powder in with the topping, go along with all the flavoring. So nice. just a couple of shakes of the garlic powder. Then we'll use the extra virgin olive oil just to kind of, you know, take a couple of gallops around it, kind of get it wet, and then we'll um, mix that together with like a spoon okay. or four. Just a little bit of that. You're so fast, it's amazing. <laughs> You're just like <laughs> Sorry, I should, I should be up. telling you each thing I'm doing, so I'm sorry. No, it's okay, it's a nice challenge. <laughs> it's like we're on an amazing race and we have to complete this competition. Exactly. <laughs> How, like, what kind of consistency are we looking for? Like wet sand? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Kind of like wet sand. I think the gluten-free breadcrumbs soak up a lot more liquid because <laughs> they're maybe a bit drier. I'm not really sure. Okay, that's yeah, this, looking good. Mine looks pretty dry too. But... Okay, it's starting to turn into wet sand. I'm going to have to add a little bit more too. Okay, maybe okay. I will also. No, I'm going to add more oil. oil. Open up mine. Oh, boy. I, the one bottle. Just, I think I need a little bit more. That's totally how I cook too. I'm just like a little bit of this, ah, a little yeah. bit more. Ah, just kind of a little it. bit more. We just kind of wing it. <laughs> right? Literally. Can I see yours? Can you show us? Yeah, so I know. Can. Okay. Oh! Mine's not quite there. I'm going to add a bit more. Okay, now it's going to now nice. it's gonna look like yours. Okay. Now it's like that wet sand consistency. Okay. The next thing we do is we're going to um, we'll put the zucchini on the cookie sheet, but try to lay them out where they're flat or separated as best we can. Oh. So then we can, then we can spoon on the cheese kind of on each piece of zucchini. 
Oh, you spoon it on. You don't like coat. Oh, okay, that's all. Oh, yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. Let's add a little bit in here first. I did forget that. We're going to add maybe a couple of spoonfuls, you know, just in, and we'll shake it around just to kind of coat it a little bit. And okay. then the rest of it, we're going to put it as topping. Just to get like a base coat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's already smelling so good, and it's not even in the oven yet. I just, I cannot wait. Yeah, it does smell good. Oh, I see. So they have like a basic, like just a base coat kind of? Exactly. I'm going to quality sample it, make sure it's okay. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Mm. Mm. Oh my Tastes gosh, it's so good. Tastes good, not even cooked. And it's mm. like, what, five ingredients? I would put this on a sandwich. Colleen, that is so good. And you can do this also with zucchini noodles, which sometimes I do buy the store-bought ones ready to go. I know that's a little more expensive, but especially with me when I'm not feeling great with my arthritis, it saves so much steps. Honestly, and you can do the same thing. Absolutely. If I'm having a hard day or if I'm just feeling like I don't want to battle with like packaging or all that extra chopping, I will happily get like, you know, I, like, one of my favorite things to get is um, pre-cubed butternut squash. I'll get that for soups or for other dishes I'm making because sometimes cutting a big old squash, it's not, oh, no. not the most easy. No, so, that's definitely not easy with one hand. <laughs> no, absolutely. And so I, I totally agree that anything that we can do in the, in the grocery store, in the kitchen, that's going to save us some time and energy is Fantastic. And we can share yep. those hacks with each other. I'm going to just dump it all on my pan and then I'm going to try to move them around. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Let's take a, a shortcut. You're doing a different technique. I love that. And I'm just laying them out. Booyah. I like your style so much. Okay. Now I'll get my little arm in here to scrape the rest. Now, what if some of them are overlapping? Like, should I use a second pan? No, they'll be fine if they're overlapping. Just a little bit? Okay. Yeah, just, just some of them. Will, those will be maybe a little softer underneath, but they'll still taste just as good. I'm only going to have a few, so it'll be all right. Okay, now it's my turn to get all the goodness out with my stem. There you there go. go. There we go. Now, a lot of times when I'm cooking, like I'll make the protein or I'll make the finish. And then sometimes I'll take the shortcut of the vegetables where I'm assuming they might sell this in Canada too. But sometimes I just buy like a bird's eye where you can just put them in the microwave, you know, and steam. steam and they can cook in the microwave just a few minutes. And it just steams the vegetables. They have all different kinds. I do this a lot to save a step for me as a shortcut. Like I'll make the protein, but then I might take a shortcut and do easy steamed vegetables from the freezer department. Great idea. That is so good. And honestly, like frozen veggies, they're frozen when they're like so fresh. So that's a great hack. Exactly. And of course, with just Sean and me, it's the perfect size for dinner. As we're sprinkling on our topping, tell me, like, how did you get into cooking? Like, have you always liked cooking or did you used to hate it? Or Believe it or not, I started to volunteer at Ronald McDonald House in 1992. A group of us from work started that and we used to make the dinner there on the third Friday of every month. When we started, I was like 20, 21. So, so um, I really Oh. That was how I, I got started, and I was always the one that made the desserts. So I'd make brownies or cakes. We did the same dinner every month yeah. because it was we knew what to buy, we knew how much to get. But we were called the lemon pepper chicks because we made lemon pepper chicken. Oh. So we did the chicken and a bunch of sides and salad. That's when I kind of got started, but I really got into it once we bought our house in 2005. Mm -hmm. I realized, okay, I, I need to learn how to feed my husband. And <laughs> And so far, it's worked out pretty good. I love watching the Food Network. So yeah. um, anytime I see different things on there, like Rachel Ray or Pioneer Woman, and I love Michael Simon and any little thing like that, that would be my baseline. And then I would just kind of make it my own way. Exactly. Like, how's this? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, <gasps> yeah, look, look how good they look. I think oh we did God. good. And then now it cooks for about, about 20 minutes. You might have to look at it because I did the other day. It got a little brown. But okay. we'll check it maybe in 15 minutes. So Great. let's stick them on in the oven. Okay. Okay, maybe I'm gonna go. Here we go. I'm so excited. Oh. I set my timer for 15 minutes just so I know to check it because I'm gonna oh, yeah, get, like, get chatting and stuff. Now another another little hint I do is I take like a, a stylus. This is since I can't push the buttons on our stove. Oh. And this is how I turn the stove on. I can use the little like stylus you use for your cell phone oh to push gosh. the buttons on my stove. That's amazing. I'd love to ask you some questions while we're waiting for our okay. beautiful zucchini time to cook. You were mentioning earlier about some of the cool ways that you talk about your arm with new people or with kids. And I'd love to hear some of those examples. Sure, sure. You know, when I was little, I honest to gosh, maybe because I'm older now, I don't think about it. I don't really remember it really ever really bothering me at all. If people ask me questions cool. or looked at me funny. Yeah. I kind of embraced it even when I was a kid. And now as an adult, what I always do, even if I can tell somebody's kind of looking at me, and if they are too afraid to approach me, I'll just go right up to them. Knowledge is power. 
And I'd rather them know who we are and there's all kinds of people out there. The main thing I always tell people is, you know, I just say, well, I was just born that way. And then I'll use the example of like, you were born with blonde hair. Well, I was born with brown hair. And then the child would normally touch their hair. And I'd say, well, what color are your eyes? And then I'll look at them and they'll be like, they're blue. And I'm like, well, see, my eyes are green. Look, you have blue eyes. I have green eyes. Just like you were born with two hands. And I was born with one. That's and then I'd say, but I have an elbow. And then I'd say, where's your elbow? And then they would show me. And I said, see, I got an elbow. I said, it's just a little shorter. That's all. That is it's no, it's no, and then they would be like, show me your elbow. The big ta-da yeah. would be like, I can make my little arm talk. Really? And I'm like, yeah, hi there. How are you today? And I would just like wiggle it and and then that would just diffuse the whole situation. And I you know do that same thing with parents. I had a mother once in a grocery store, because you know some as you know with a little one, when you're in a hurry in the store, you just want to go up and down the aisles and get out. Yeah. And the little girl, I heard her say to her mom, what happened to that lady's arm? And the mom's like, oh, she just fell and broke it. And that bothered me so much. I went down one other aisle and I had to turn around and I went back to her and I'm like, ma'am, it's okay. I just kind of want to introduce myself to you and your daughter and Good for just you. explain how I was born this way. Yeah. And at first I was afraid she was going to get upset that I corrected her, but it worked out really good. And, you know, she had no idea. And I didn't want that girl to grow up thinking she's going to fall off a tree and lose her arm. Or if she does break her arm and it has cast she's gonna wake up with an yeah. arm one day that's so yeah. good of you you gotta make fun you gotta enjoy it and another fun thing about having little arms is you can get cool little oven mitts yeah. that fit my little arm oh my gosh the full hand ones yeah and then i like the little small ones that go right on my little arm and i never burn myself it works perfectly that is amazing Woo -woo. i love that yay let me get mine where's mine these chicken ones i really like they just look funny and they stick on because i just like shove them all the way up like this and then it's like oh, I love it. my whole arm is just like hello uh, <laughs> hello it's so cool yeah and you're right they just stick on and you know i just don't use the thumb bit but they they right. work really well for keeping you safe in the kitchen yep. in fact i'm gonna leave these out because soon our zucchinis are gonna that's be right done so this is the 15 the minute mark. mark should i take a peek okay let's yeah, take, take a peek okay Ooh. Ooh, looking good. I think mine might need more time. I don't know though. Like there's still a yeah, time. I need more time. The, the zucchini part still looks a little. I think it's gonna need the whole time. I know. Yeah. Tell me about like other people in your life who also have a limb difference or even arthritis in the way that you do. Like have you have you known a lot of people like this growing up or not so much? Like how was that for you? Okay. When I was younger, we used to have a, a neighbor on the street over that had an arm like like us too. What? Yeah. She was much older than me. Like probably when I was like in kindergarten age, she was in high school. She was the one that taught me how to tie my shoes. What? That's amazing. Yeah. That's so she taught cool. me how to tie my shoes because back when, when I was younger, you could not go to kindergarten unless you could tie your shoes. That was a rule. That's awful. I know. <laughs> and so she taught me how to tie my shoes. And then, of course, over the years, I just always figured out ways to do things on her own. But one little thing that I am a little bit passionate about that I haven't been able to do because of the pandemic was painting. I love to paint pottery. Just simple little... We had a store in a plaza next to us that sold pottery. You just go in there and paint it. And I would go spend like two hours at a time and just paint different things. And so, you know, this is just a couple of my little Those examples. Those are gorgeous. I so even painted some mini mouses and, So when you, know. you paint, like, what's your preferred method of holding the paintbrush? Well, I mostly do it with my left hand. My right hand is such a help with, like, spinning the table or sometimes I'll have to angle it at a certain way. Yeah. I could not do it without my little arm. I mean, I, I have to have it. Absolutely. You know, I did a couple episodes with my friend Daniel, who is a, a quad amputee, and he paints with his mouth. I don't know if you've seen any of those videos, but um, oh, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, they're just, it's so beautiful, like just like his precision. And I w went over to his house before the pandemic, and he taught me a lot about painting technique. And I think my painting turned out okay. You'll have to watch that and see <laughs> see how oh, yeah. I did and judge my work. But it was just incredible, like how we just like adapt our bodies to do the things that we want to do in such beautiful and cool ways. You know, I remember when I first went to my first sleepover in seventh grade mm -hmm. and the next morning, all the girls got up and wanted, they, this is back when people use a regular curling iron. They got up and started to curl their hair. And I was like, oh my God, I've never used a curling iron. And I used to put my hair in grits. So by the next sleepover, when I left that sleepover, I told my mom, you've got to get me a curling iron. I have to practice. Oh my gosh. If I got a curling iron, I wish my hair was long. I mean, I've worked on it and worked on it, but there's all, you know, I just took a section of my hair. I yeah. 
held it with a part of a comb and I'd lean over and I'd put the curling iron in it, roll it down to the end and then roll it up and let the comb fall to the floor. And I figured out how to do my whole head. So the next sleep, the next sleepover, I could not wait to get up that morning and be like, I'm gonna plug mine in, I'm gonna do it. And I, all those girls are just looking at me like, oh my God. Oh my and I just felt like I was a rock star. That is incredible. That reminds me of the first time I learned how to put my hair in a ponytail. I practiced for maybe like a day. And I was like an adult. I was like 21 or something because I just was like, eh, whatever. Not that I didn't think I could. I just didn't think it would be that accessible. Then I did it and I was like, yes, yes. It was awesome. so great. Oh, are you taking yours out of the oven? Yes. Me too, me too. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. These look so amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, they're browning on top and they smell amazing. I cannot wait to eat these. Uh, I want to eat them the right balsamic, now, but they're too hot. But the balsamic gives it, a, you know, that little zing and the texture of the cheese with the panko. I think it's a good match. I think it goes really good. How long do I have to wait to eat one? I don't know. I'm ready to die in. I'm going to try Ooh. a tiny one on the edge. I'm so excited about this. Ready? Yeah. Mmm. Oh. Mm. 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 <laughs> so it's mm. cheesy, it's crunchy, it's a little bit sweet from the zucchini, mm -hmm. and it's salty, but it has like, it's soft and a little bit crunchy. Like I can't, the textures are so good. This yeah, is amazing. it kind of covers every every part of your tongue, you know, it's kind of neat. You've changed my life. And it's it's super easy to do. And yeah. I do this sometimes even in my toaster oven, I'll do a smaller size. And it's just for me for like lunch. We need something green on a plate a couple times a week. I'm just gonna eat this right now, like all of it. Colleen, I cannot thank you enough for this. You've just made my day. I just like oh, to be able to connect with you and you're such a, a ray of sunshine in, in this weirdo world. Like, thank you so much. This was amazing. Well, I appreciate it. You know, even though I'm older, I honest to gosh, I did not even know these, these organizations existed. I went to see Shaquem a couple years ago when he was here in Jacksonville and I kind of, I saw a bunch of people like me, but I didn't really realize there was like a real lucky thing project that there were major organizations. I, I just thought he just brought the people here to where I live. And then afterwards, like, when he signed me up on Instagram, I was like, well, let me see what's out there. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, these are my people. It doesn't matter when in your life, as long as you find your people. Yeah. So if you haven't done already, you can subscribe to STEM Kitchen on YouTube. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch us. And Colleen, this was the best. And you have to try this. This is so, so good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. We're friends forever. Absolutely. Friends forever. Um, so I'm giving yeah. you a high five. Hi one. Hi one. Hi one. I love it. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you next time on Stump Kitchen. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Stump Kitchen. Stump Kitchen. Gluten free, vegan eats, stumptastic treats. <laughs>